Hey guys, it's Tyler, and welcome to another CGS live stream. Hope you're having a good week. What are we doing today? Well, we're going to do a little creature head demo here. And I thought it'd be fun to show off one of the ways that I like to come up with creature ideas. When you're doing stuff like creatures, robots, it can feel sometimes overwhelming the amount of options you have. The palette seems quite broad compared to doing a human design where humans, you know, unless you're doing a stylized image, a human can feel like they have more constrained proportions, right? We kind of know humans generally how they're built. Um, but with creatures and, and robots and things like that, it feels like there's a lot more options. So, you know, where do we go for ideas on that sort of thing? And I like to do this process where I take a couple different things and try and fuse them together. And oftentimes you'll see artists creating things called mood boards or reference sheets. And that's a really, really great practice. Uh, basically assembling a bunch of images together that you find inspiring and kind of working off of those, right? Compiling those together and coming up with something of your own. But sometimes a whole sheet of reference images can feel like a lot of things to be managing. Um, and so with this here, what we're looking at is essentially the same thing, a reference sheet or a mood board. We've just limited our options to two things, mostly two things. I mean, we've got two subject matters here, a couple pictures of each to work from. But what this does is it, it makes the, the creative process a little bit simpler, right? We're just trying to kind of fuse two things together. Um, you think about it like juggling balls, right? This is just having us juggle less balls at the same time versus if we had a sheet of 20 things to look at, you might kind of get overwhelmed, right? You would wonder, what do I pull from of all of these things? What will work together? It's, it's at some point you have so much to look at that it isn't helping you anymore. So what we're gonna do again is we're gonna do a little creature head here and I'm gonna try to fuse a hippo with a crab. <laughs> And that sounds absurd, um, but I think it'll be a fun challenge and we'll see how it goes. All right, so let me get the chat open here so I can make sure I'm uh, answering any questions you guys might have about this process here. Where is my chat window? There we go. Logging in. Okay, I think we've got that all working good. Let's see. Camera reoriented here and slide into the painting position. All right. Hippo and crab, hippo and crab. Hippo and crab, that sounds like a cool cartoon show, actually. They should make that. It's like a hippo with a little, little crab buddy riding around on his back everywhere. <laughs> hey, Tony, welcome in, sir. How you doing? I want to get this page a little dirty first. You guys know I like to get a little grunge on my canvas to start with. Helps get me in the right frame of mind for the beginning of a drawing. Did not be precious. Get nice and loose. Just going for nice big shapes. I want to be thinking about silhouette and all that sort of jazz. We do not want to be creating clean, precise lines at this point. That would be not the right thing to focus on. So let's just talk about these images for a second here. Some really cool shapes to be pulling from. Obviously the hippo's skeleton is really cool. I mean, gosh, look at this head shape. It's just amazing. I mean, this basically is a modern day dinosaur. And I think what one of the highlights of the crab here is all of the uh, interesting sort of, uh, you know, exoskeleton shapes going on. We have these really funky little plates and some fun, smaller details. And I think on this, this left image over here, there's some interesting little bumps going on. 
Yeah, so it's like almost like I'm imagining if you were to give a hippo like an exoskeleton almost is kind of where I'm thinking in my head. Might be a neat way to go. So let's let's play with that idea. And I like this this kind of position of the head up here on this hippo is pretty cool. So maybe we'll kind of work from that and see where it takes us. And when you're starting out with a drawing, it's good to remember to flip things horizontally to check your symmetry and proportions. So we'll, we'll definitely be doing that. Right now, I just want to get something on the paper here. It might feel like it's very much like what we're looking at here, but I want to get that there first. As a, as a kind of a scaffolding for us to play around on top of. And at the same time, I'm sort of just becoming familiar with the shapes of what's going on here with this, with this head. Because, well, it might seem surprising, I don't draw hippos every day. <laughs> Let's zoom in on this guy here. That's a really interesting shape. This gets a little ambiguous in here, actually. But it, you can feel that it sinks in. And, and when you're drawing this stuff, definitely try to think volumetrically, think structurally, and draw contour lines over things so that you can feel how they're coming in and out, right? Even if that line doesn't exist on the reference, draw that. It will help you in understanding the form and thinking about it in a more 3D way. A trash or crabopotamus incoming, exactly. JD says too many cool parts of a hippo, this little Shrek ears, right? There's just so many cool shapes, yeah. Hey, Sola, do you teach concept design? Yeah, I teach the concept art courses at CGS, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, hell, it's just fun to just draw a hippo in general, right? Like, this is just... <laughs> this little curve here makes it look like he's smiling. I don't know. I mean, that's that's another thing to consider, right? Is uh, humans are always trying to impart human emotions on, on animals. And so that's why when we look at, like, a bearded dragon, they look like they're happy all the time. And we look at a chameleon and they look like they're upset all the time. And of course, that's absurd. <laughs> we have no idea how they're feeling. Um, but it's worth considering when you're doing a creature or, or any design, really. You know, how might the audience react to that expression, right? Is there something in there that they might think or that gives them the impression of a certain kind of emotion or personality? And uh, is, that, is that the personality that you want them to? to get out of that, that design. So we may play around with these proportions so that, because I don't think I want my creature to look quite as, as happy, quite as smiley as, uh, as this here. Let's get this big roll of fat under here. It's so funny to me because their uh, head is just so bony and, and full of extreme contours and then we get to their body and their body is just a tube they like a, a big a big tube of flesh floating in the water there it's kind of funny anyway we're not going to be doing the body i'm kind of just giving myself a sense of how that's all transitioning there we're going to be definitely focusing on the head here And they've got these crazy teeth going on. Zoom in on this mouth. What is going on in there? Look at that. There's these crazy different, different weird folds. And this might sound like a stretch, but honestly, the detail happening in here, I think, will really lend itself to some of the, the weird shapes we might be able to bring in from, from the crab here. 
that'll be certainly a lot of fun to play with. Let's flip this again and see how it's feeling. Yeah, I like these overall shapes. This is looking looking good. Again, this is going to be that scaffolding we're, we're working from here. And you'll notice just how loose this is. I'm not worried about the uh, like the line weights or anything because this is no one's going to see this in the end. It's just for me. Well, I guess and for you guys too at the moment. <laughs> Let's see. You really want to do it, but you're based in Australia? Well, there's no problem with that at all. We totally have students from all over the world and, and mentors all over the world, too. Definitely. I mean, actually, CGS is headquartered in Australia. <laughs> I'm not sure if you knew that. Pugs are typically confused. Yeah, I have this weird uh, thought about pug faces. They look sort of like if you combine a dog with a fly. <laughs> oh, no offense to pug owners out there, but... So many animals look concerned. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of animals do look concerned, don't they? Okay. So we've got this sort of scaffolding now. And what I'm going to do, turn down the music a little bit here because usually people tell me my music's too loud. Just getting in the groove, man. Uh, we're going to create a new layer. And now we're going to start to look at the crab and think about how we might interpret some of these shapes and infuse them and you know we have a two hour stream here so i'm going to kind of try and work through one head and and kind of get it into the render face so you guys can see a more complete process there but certainly on your own it would be good to explore multiple versions of this right play around with different kind of proportions um give yourself a few options before you dive into something so i just want to kind of state that as a disclaimer um, that there is a little bit of process optimization that happens because of the stream but i would definitely want to play around with a few few ideas there so obviously we could definitely and maybe we will have different drawings i don't know yet it just depends on how i'm feeling about what we've got but you know, there is the opportunity to play with some some weird eye stocks i think that might be a kind of a natural choice i may i may lose the ears i don't know yet But the cool thing about this, this exoskeleton is that we have all of these plates to play with. And all these funky, weird little mouth parts. My goodness, look at that. That is bizarre. And I might want this this creature to feel kind of kind of dangerous, so maybe we'll maybe we'll infuse a little bit more of the teeth there on the top. See what's going on here. And when 
professionals are designing creatures. Um, they'll usually have some kind of a narrative they're working with. Uh, sometimes a very specific ecosystem. Uh, you know, that's more typical in, in films where we have to be careful about the ideas of evolution and, and um, take, for example, the movie Avatar, right? They had to very carefully consider that world and that ecosystem and, and you know, how uh, make sure that the designs made sense in that ecosystem. So obviously those are things that also become part of your design choices, right? Here, we have a little bit more freedom, right? We're just trying to make a fun fusion. Um, but different scenarios may present you with additional uh, challenges and parameters. And to be honest, more parameters make this easier. I find a blank canvas and a, and a blank slate to be one of the most intimidating things. But if we have some guidelines, then, um, you know, then there's something to work with right out of the gate. Be fun to play with a tongue shape in here. Perhaps some kind of a split in the lower jaw here. Kind of like the feeling I'm getting from this this area of the crab mouth here. It's like there's these two two areas that operate. Um, kind of independent of each other there. When you're designing these shapes, one other thing to think about is <clears throat> areas of, uh, of, of detail and areas of, of rest. So that way this image doesn't get too busy everywhere. So I don't want to put tiny little plates all over this thing. I want to have a couple areas that are bigger and more open. Now, we are working on the head here. So in terms of the composition of the entire creature, the head is generally going to have more detail than the body. Uh, so that's that's definitely something to consider but even within the head you know the mouth or like the eyes for example might be areas where there's more detail and then the cheeks or the jaw it's a place where we might play with a little less detail so we're thinking about almost like a, a nesting doll concept of composition where we have the whole frame then we have the whole body of the creature then we have the head of the creature then let's say like the mouth of the creature right we're thinking about those ratios as we sort of work inward in the composition. Mm, I think I actually like that eye. Oops. I like that eye closer in. Oh my goodness. Come on now. And I'm always really conscious of my center line of the design here. So if we don't have a really clear sense of that center line, then the, the three quarter of this of this drawing is gonna gonna get away from us. At this point, I've merged in my underdrawing 
after having reduced it to almost no opacity because we we don't we don't really need that anymore at this point we have the overall structure so we're starting to work out some of the medium shapes here The other reason I'm working kind of loose here with this sketch is because I'm going to be moving into tone pretty quickly and uh, I don't need to obsess over the cleanliness of the line because as I'm working on the tone I'm also going to be fiddling with the design a bit too so there'll be some exploration in that process there okay well maybe we'll just kind of apply a little bit of that foot there. Okay, it's definitely something interesting going on. I'm going to see if I can find some opportunities to bring in some slightly more geometric shapes here and just feel out the structure. Really make sure I'm clear about the, the flow of this head, you know, like almost like you're designing the body of a car, right? You want to be thinking about the flow on uh, nature. There's an elegance to the forms in nature, right? They, um, these plates all feel like they kind of flow together. We don't have things that feel, well, they might feel weird to us and alien because they're not human-like. They still have an elegance to them, the way that they flow together, the way that the forms fit together. Uh, so we don't, we want to be aware of that in our own design as well. This should not feel like a, like a Frankenstein's contraption. This is something that should feel like it. You would find it in whatever world this creature lives in naturally so that right there of course is another thing to consider um, in your in your direction there I always wonder if this um, do we want let's see hold on I'm gonna play for a moment with this um, these eye stocks being a little bit shorter because I think I think I like maybe them being a little bit more contained in the silhouette there. Because this head shape's kind of cool. Let's see. This little angular plate happening here. I think that's... It can stick off a little bit, but I like them maybe being just a little more constrained. Yeah. Hey, Bruno, welcome in. I'm a big fan of silhouettes that are a bit more simple. Get that nice, strong kind of outer read. Uh, and then within that, we can play with all kinds of fun details and information.
might be cool to play around with some of those little bumps on this front end here, kind of like this grab claw. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely get into some more details here when I start to introduce the tone, which I think will do feeling pretty good about the overall structure of this here. I think we kind of know where we're headed with this. At this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to, um, well, let's actually use our layers as a history state here. It's always nice to be able to show kind of your steps. So we had our initial doodle there, and now we're going to move into creating some tone. And here it's kind of a sculptural process for me. I'm going to be creating some ambient occlusion, some half tones going to be designing a little bit at the same time so this is a little bit of an organic process here but in this stage is where we want to think about where our light is going to come from and I'm going to have the light coming from this uh, left side over here from behind the camera pretty standard sort of uh, light from above offset to one side this is a concept so we don't need to be trying to do anything super dramatic or fancy with our, our lighting here we're just trying to do pretty clear image of our creature design. And try and resolve some of the bigger forms first. Certainly going to play around with a few more plate separations as we get further into the render here. Hey, Rendani, welcome in.
So now here we're gonna use the liquify tool to just make a few little, little adjustments here to the to the forms, things that are feeling they could use a slight bit of proportional tweaking. thing to be conscious of when you're doing a step like this is that you'll people tend to have a tendency to stay away from the areas that they're not sure about it's like you know that fear of the unknown <laughs> and so if there's little pockets of this design that you're staying away from that's an indication that you need to actually spend some time in that area Hey, Audrey, welcome in. We're, we're designing a crabopotamus. You know, just your everyday kind of uh, drawing uh, assignment. Exactly, just the normal old Thursday. Crabopotamus Thursdays. And I'm kind of a big fan of the detail pass on things all small shapes so the initial sketch the scaffolding that we were doing that's for me it's one of the most boring parts uh, interestingly enough i love after we've got those big shapes resolved and now we're starting to tinker with all of these uh, small medium and small forms that's uh oof, that's one of my favorite parts Should we can give him another couple little teeth in here? Why not? I feel like that's it's definitely feeling appropriate. Get a little smaller as they go back there. Maybe there's another little tooth popping out over here. Noise.
I'm noticing one kind of cool thing about this crab is there's this little circular kind of trough indent for the eye stock there that I think is, is pretty neat. So I'd like to maybe get that in here as well. And uh, we will definitely be adding color to this, don't worry. This will be a more complete looking render. We're just, uh, we're working in clay right now. That's kind of how I think about it. We're whatever, whatever your favorite clay is, that's the clay we're working with right now. I make it look easy. Oh, thanks. Well, <laughs> I am uh, thankful for that because this is on stream and I don't, I definitely don't want to make things look uh, like they're a disaster. That would be problematic. start to care about how these values are reading the sort of nuances of these half tones here start to care just a bit more as the render comes together general goal should be to just be working toward a sense of clarity on the design and with that clarity hopefully comes a sense of confidence and a sense of subtlety to your rendering When I'm dealing with uh, complex shapes that I know I'm going to have to mirror over to the other side, sometimes I'll just kind of work on one side a bit more first uh, so I can get the flow and then work about work on the other side. So I'm trying to do both at the same time. It's just a lot. So you know, definitely maybe focus on one side first and then figure out what the flow is that you want and then mirror it over. And we had the general structure, but there's some other little details I'm adding now that I'm just getting resolved before we try and put that over here. And since the design is bilaterally symmetrical, we don't actually have to get super detailed about this side if we didn't want to. Like we could be a little painterly about this side. 
and it wouldn't be terrible. Um, we wouldn't have modelers asking us what's happening over here because we could just tell them that's the same as it is on this side. And you could always supply this render with some orthographics or additional drawings. Always an option. You can imagine the stress of being like, oh my God, I don't know what I'm doing during a stream. <laughs> yeah. Well, I do feel that sometimes still, um, especially at the, at the beginning, right? Where I'm just like, is this going to be, is this going to come together or not? There are still always, always those chances that something is going to just be like a complete wipeout. But the more you do this stuff, the less, the less chance you have of having a disaster, luckily. So I like that. I'll have to remember that one.
generally at this stage I'm not super worried about outer edges of things because we're going to have the need for some cleanup after laying in colors and stuff so I don't want to do too many redundant processes but yeah this is uh it's coming along pretty good here I think we might be able to move into some uh Some color choices here. Yeah, it would change the movie, wouldn't it? That would definitely be more of a more of a creature movie, perhaps. Or we can imagine um what's the name of the little lobster guy? We can imagine imagine him having this body instead. That would be a trip, right? possible color choices so we can put those right underneath because we've just been working with, with uh, transparent shadows this whole time so I'm uh, managing my value choices by just simply adding black and removing black from from the image and opacity in in the brush and I'm never picking values from a uh, color wheel or value spectrum. Um, it's just about applying certain degrees of pressure to get different degrees of value. And uh, yeah, when things feel too dark, I just erase them and that's that's the process. Okay, so when we start the color process, we just pick some simple stuff first, right? Let's just pick some flat colors and, and see how it's feeling. Um, you know, I think this guy wants to be, uh, I don't know that he wants to be super vibrant or anything like that, uh, but I also don't know that we want to go with something as plain as the gray, gray hippo here. I'm just going to pick this for, oh, this is, is this image grayscale? This image is grayscale. My goodness, look at that. <laughs> nice. Okay, cool. Bonus. I'm just going to fill it in with this color for now, and then we'll uh, evaluate after it's in place. And, of course, there'll be some gradations and... subtle little color uh, nuances that we'll inject in here. Boring, I guess, because we're sort of just masking different areas to be different than the um, uh, 
surrounding area. And while I'm careful about edges and things like that, I'm not wasteful about how long I spent on it because cleanup is a breeze. And we have to consider what is uh, what is going to be most important about this image in the end. And it's if it's not distractingly off, then it doesn't matter. And I think the inside of the mouth is another area that warrants a different uh, different color there. sliver there. Let's maybe let's include that in the inner mouth coloration. And certainly when you're doing the pass before this, you can be thinking about areas where you might want these different regions to exist. That can definitely be and should be part of your design consideration. And if it helps you, you can even work in that local value choice into the render if you'd like. There's nothing wrong with that. Just know that that kind of uh, is going to multiply and, and uh, combine with, with this uh, color pass here. And you'll have to take that into consideration. I'm going to truncate this blue kind of right here. And again, I don't know that we're going to go with this blue color. This is just kind of a mask I'm creating right now. I think the inside of this here wants to be more, um, more fleshy. Um, so we'll keep the blue region on the outside there. So see, now we can play around with, uh, you know, how light or dark we want this to be. Now let's work on our next region here. I'm just uh, using a mask to avoid painting over any of what we've already done. It's a nice efficiency. I think maybe we will go with one of these kind of pink tones here for the uh, for the mouth region, but I don't want to go that dark. Let's go. Let's go a bit lighter. Ooh, that's really strong. Let's try. Yeah, there we go. That's better. And I think here I'm just going to go with everything. Well, maybe should the tongue be a different color? That could be. That could be kind of neat, maybe. Kind of neat, maybe. Yeah, I think we'll let the tongue be a slightly different color. this roll in the render maybe we should have included this 
now that I'm thinking about it, let's uh, let's just include this area here, and I'll we'll just kind of truncate the the color off on the top there. Yeah, I think I want to get that that roll in there. It's gonna dither it a little bit, so it doesn't look too too weird there. It's kind of fun to look at the version without any other render on top, right? And while this transition of color here feels harsh right now, <clears throat> right now it'll be very easy for us to blend that together in a moment. Okay, let's go ahead and do this tongue, figure out what we want to do for that area. I think it still wants to be on the warmer side, but perhaps it is a little bit more yellow. Let's try that first, see how that feels. Oh, whoops, we forgot a little region there. Yeah, I think that's kind of fun. And then got some teeth, which I think we should leave a lighter tone, but perhaps they become, well, look how, look how dark the hippo's teeth are. stocks what to do with the eye stocks maybe we'll go with a warm color as well let's work off this tongue color here hmm So now that we have that blocked in, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to add just a bit of atmosphere to the scene here. I don't really want this to be a, a white background, so let's uh, start to build this up.
Okay, I actually think I, I like the um, level of darkness I had there. Okay, so color variation. So what we're going to do now is come here and play around with some of that. Let's do it on, on the uh, big, big skin area first. That's the, the largest portion here. Mostly grayish, but the snout be orangey. Yeah, I think that'd be cool to play around with a bit of uh, gradients on the front of the nose here. That's a good idea. Hippos are only scary. <laughs> yeah, hippos are pretty darn scary. Would not want to encounter one um, in the wild. There, that would be that would be frightening. Uh, right. So let's see. Perhaps a bit of warmth to this front snout area. And maybe we get a bit of that warmth coming into the front of these bottom jaw parts as well. It's kind of neat. It's cool to maybe do it on these, the ends of these tips here too. Or maybe that's a different color entirely. Maybe we play with something a bit more. Um... Hmm. Maybe the ends of this just get a bit more intense color wise. That's kind of fun, right? And the cool thing too is that we could easily play around with changing all this around. We just throw a hue set adjustment on this and link it to our flats. So we can just move these hues around, right? We could shift it and go go all crazy with this and see what feels right. I think where we're at is is pretty good. Um, but just as a note for you guys, if you want to do this process and, and have a lot of freedom to play around, I think that would be um, something to consider doing. And maybe these teeth have a slight gradient on them as well. So let's play around with that. I'm thinking perhaps they're a little darker at the base. Then they get lighter at the tips. And maybe the tongue has something else going on. Maybe it's got a bit of a gradient too. So let's link that here. And let's just maybe get a bit blue on the end here. That's see, that's kind of fun. <laughs> I like that. Let's turn it down a little bit. It might be a little strong, but I think it's nice that it has a bit of a, a hue shift there. And this is stuff you see in nature all the time, right? Creatures, um, animals have these uh, gradients. Um, you have that. Um, the counter shading is a, is a huge thing in the animal world where you have the uh, underside being lighter than the top. Um, 
So that, you know, that's definitely something else you could try and bring in here if that felt appropriate for your design. And then where's those eye stocks? So I was thinking a gradient for these two where we have kind of opposite of the teeth where it goes darker at the base, lighter at the end. Let's, let's have it go darker at the end and lighter at the base. I think that would be kind of cool because then we can get some nice reflectivity on that and it'll really pop. Okay, so here I'm just playing around with colorizing a bit of the uh, ambience, all of the shadows, the rendering layer essentially that we had. Uh, just, just kind of playing around with uh, colorizing that layer a bit. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and duplicate this layer. We're sort of on the next step. So that last one was step three. Now we're gonna be on step four. And what does step four mean? Well, step four is where we're gonna, we have a pretty good base of what we're working with here. Uh, so we can get rid of our layers now. We can sort of just work raw on this piece um, and start to start to refine it. So I'm gonna merge everything together here. We can see that that's our full character now. We're gonna merge our background together. And this step is, is always nice because it it's just it's just you kind of getting intimate with the piece, right? We don't have to worry about any of the layer nonsense going on. You know what? That was, I don't I don't care for much that that darkness we have there. I think I'm gonna try and keep that um, lit there here I'm just using a soft light brush to introduce some gradients into the image.
Hmm. Let's see. I think I want that. that are feeling like they're not in line with our value. So this uh, surface of this creature here in this render is going to be basically dry, so we're not going to introduce uh, any kind of like a crazy oily reflectivity or anything like that. Um, you know, it's basically kind of a leathery surface, so when we have these little highlights coming in, we have to just be cautious of um, what material type that it, that starts to indicate this is a critical thing to consider when you're adding these highlights is how does this affect the feel of the material now the inside of the gums here this is an area where I imagine this could be a more of a wet quality we could get just a little bit more highlights going on there And you have to think about the direction of the light too, of course. And there could be a little bit of, a couple little flecks of specularity on some of those areas.
<laughs> the little teeth make him adorable. That's amazing. Hey, he is, he is quite a wacky, wacky creature, I must say. I mean, what the heck did you expect from a crabopotamus, right? Yeah, it's so interesting, like, the teeth set up on a hippo's mouth. It's just so funny, like, you know, they don't really have, uh, they don't have anything for, for, like, ripping and tearing and shredding things, right? They just have a big, big old gobbler. <laughs> it's really pretty funny. I wonder if it might be cool to suggest one other sort of, like, layer of membrane in here, right? Like, hippos have that weird extra layer going on. I think that might be a cool extra detail to make sure we get. Yeah, I think that's a neat, neat little extra feature there.
So hopefully you guys are getting a good sense of this idea of working from big to small. Right? So these are really, really small details now that we're adding. And we were not thinking about those initially, right? We were thinking about that scaffolding first or creating this overall structure of this creature's head. Uh, then we started to resolve some of those medium forms. And now, only now, after we have all that stuff figured out, now we can start to get in there and noodle on these fun little details. And I could spend ages, <laughs> ages doing this step because I love it so much. It's so much fun. And the longer you spend on this step, of course, the cooler your render is going to look. these little hairs underneath in between these areas it's pretty cool and i'm thinking that might be something neat um something neat to get in here whiskers it needs to be for it to feel crustacean like it has to be kind of in between things maybe there's a little bit coming out from the side of the mouth here I have a lot of lag. Sorry about that. That uh, might be my internet. Uh, sometimes it's not the greatest, so apologies there. Hopefully you guys can still uh, follow along. And uh, thanks. I appreciate that. Glad you like it so far. Definitely having some fun with this guy. He's off to the side too far. Let's bring him more into the middle. Yeah. And at this point, too, it's good to be squinting your eyes to just be evaluating the values, the lighting, right? Does it feel you're getting the right kind of quality to the lighting there? I was noticing that this form here actually kind of wants to maybe come forward a bit more. So I'm going to add some of that, some of that highlight down there to that 
that neck roll. And it's, uh, it's a little intersection here. The add detail is in the um, in the transitional areas between sections. Think about like a uh, any kind of like industrial machine. Think about connector parts, right? Where you have like little extra, you know, flanges or or valves or or you know things that ensure things are are safely joined. Um, you know, it tends to be a little bit more detail in those areas. And that same logic can certainly apply to I'm gonna reshape this eye stock just slightly here. I wanna get just a bit more tapering to that that shape. Internet connection is red on OBS here. Again, sorry about that, guys. Not not ever sure when or not, even though I pay the cable company many millions of dollars a month for my cable, still does not do what I want it to do. Does this want to have gotta be careful here. This is an area of visual rest. I don't want to disrupt that too much. Yeah, let's leave that. Add detail everywhere, but you can't. You can't because if you have detail everywhere, then nothing feels detailed. And that's just not going to work. Let's pop back over to this guy here. and glean any other fun fun bits i do have uh a i have a brush here that's got some pore texture to it let's see if i can find that texture skin pores yeah this can be kind of a fun little extra um bit of detail to add something this is the kind of stuff that is way too tedious to hand paint so it's nice to have a few brushes that can give you some of this uh, extra information you can help sell the the texture skin there The other thing is it's been quite windy in my area, so that also might be, maybe it's affecting something with the internet. Could be, I don't know. It's the only thing I could think of. And so, you know, these noodly details, they are really important. Uh, but, you know, when I work on them, they don't feel as impactful, right? Like you guys aren't seeing dramatic changes at this point because we aren't making any dramatic choices. Everything is um, kind of dialed in. Um, and that's kind of where you want to be at at this point.
Okay, uh, I'm gonna add just a little bit of room lighting on this so we get that form to, to pop. So let's see, uh, I'll go into the, what's a good brush for this? Hmm. Perhaps the marker brush. We'll do, we'll do, I always like to start with white and then we can always tint it afterwards, so. Let's get our navigator up a little bit larger so we can be checking to make sure this is feeling like it's wrapping believably. make the uh, the front light just a little lower key so that way our rim light is a bit more impactful here. Something definitely worth considering when you set up the lights in your scene is to not have the lights competing for intensity because it will have a flattening effect on your image. And it's fun to play around with how much or where that light backlight is rotated to, you know, like how much of the form it's actually hitting because you just have so much control at this phase on that. But just make sure when you add these lights in that you're thinking about them in a very physical way. I'm oftentimes seeing students who are um, wanting to put in this sort of kicker light here, but they're thinking about it like it's an outline, and uh, that is to their detriments. It is doing the opposite of what you want if you outline things, right? It starts to feel flatter. adjust our atmosphere in the scene a bit. I want to get us focusing on the uh, 
subject matter there, not the uh, <laughs> the head of the creature, not this area that we didn't that we didn't render. And let's bring in just a little bit of lighting from over here, just a slight hint that there's uh, some of that atmospheric effect from the lighting coming in from the top there. And here we're going to go to final step, which is not much to it really. We'll use just a bit of glow brush on some of these rimlet areas here just to get some of the light actually blooming off the edge. Kind of helps, helps sell that effect there a bit more. Maybe we'll pop that little highlight there. That might be... Nope. See, we don't want to put that front light too hot because it's going to compete with the back one. So just be careful about that. Get a little bit of bloom off that there. And I always do a quick auto tone on this. This is just a Photoshop feature that kind of tries to adjust your, your overall levels and just to see what it's suggesting to me, right? And so we get, we definitely get some cool, interesting color stuff happening here. Kind of like this warm background. Um, so I think we might definitely use a little bit of that information. That just helps it, helps it pop a little bit more there. And uh, I always like to do a bit of sharpening on this. So we'll run a, run an unsharp makes all the detail really nice and crisp. And I think at this point, you can sign this guy. And there is our Crabopotamus. <laughs> all right, you guys, it was a lot of fun. I hope you enjoyed watching this thing come together. Uh, it was, uh, it's an interesting, uh, interesting choice of subject matter here i wasn't quite sure how it was going to come out but uh yeah i'm i'm pretty pleased with it it's a pretty funky silly kind of creature uh but again you know what did you expect putting a crab together with a hippopotamus that's a pretty interesting challenge uh, but it was it was definitely an enjoyable experience all right so that's going to be it for this stream thanks audrey i appreciate it thank you everybody for for joining me and uh, make sure to like and subscribe to the channel and check out other content here on the CGS YouTube mentors doing cool stuff all throughout the week, not just concept art, but 3D modeling, animation, effects, kinds of stuff here on the channel. It's really cool, all from uh, industry pros. So definitely check that out. And uh, if you're interested in actually getting into the industry, uh, you know, if, you, if you're uh, new to this field and you want to get some professional training, then uh, feel free to check out cgspectrum.com for all of our classes and I'm one of the concept art mentors here at the school and so um, that's kind of my specialty uh, but we have mentors for all different fields related to uh, to entertainment design all right thanks guys and I'll see you around bye bye <laughs>